We start now the workshop part of this meeting. I present you first a call to legit a version control system and then we go through the steps toward our very first project. So what is a version control system? Something very, very useful. It wouldn't be exaggerated to claim it is one of the main technologies that hallowed the today's prevalent uh, decentralized uh, distributed mode of software uh, production, where some developers or staff are in one country and others are at uh, the world's opposite. While its roots are in software design, some kind of version control systems is used in the production of any intellectual product studies, technical reports, uh, manuals, web pages, things about uh, uh, Wikipedia. Version control systems are any system that help manage keeping multiple uh, uh, versions of the same document and help collaboration between multiple users toward a digital product. Basic version control systems are nowadays integrated in office applications or web applications, but we refer here in this slide to the typically more powerful tools that are used in software development. Typically, these tools have facilities not available in basic office track revisions tools. They allow to assign names and log entries to any point of the project development. They allow to visualize the difference between these points. You can see here in the figure, you can create branches of different development pathway. For example, one developer works on uh, resolving a certain bug or a team working on a new future. They all typically doesn't work on the main branch, but on a branch specific to their work. When they are done, they merge their specific branches into the main branch, and the version control system will automatically manage or facilitate the resolution of conflicts between the versions of the project in the different branches. While they are essentially indispensable in collaborative production environments. They can also be very useful in situations of project managed by a single person, as they make it possible to keep the project orderly, avoiding the creation of many directories. The first generation of version control systems as the concurrent version system, CVS, Subversion, SVN, you can still find projects that use them, were characterized by a client-server model. Only a so-called central server had the full project history, while the individual user had only its own current version stored on his her local computer. The second generation of version control systems like JIT, Mercurial, Bazaar use instead a distributed model where each user has the whole copy, including the history of the project, and uh, she exchanges its contributions to the project with the other remote nodes. This undoubtedly has the inconvenience of having to replicate the disk space on each PC, but uh, this space is nowadays cheap. Bandwidth is more a limiting factor. When the developer has the whole history of a project on his RPC, she can easily make operations like merging or uh, making a diff with uh, all their versions from her own PC without the need to connect to a server. Also, having multiple copies of the whole project increases the redundancy of the system as uh, there isn't any single server that, if it goes down or it is attacked, would halt the development of the project or you risk to lose all the project's history. While these models are fully distributed, this doesn't mean that you can't use a model that still has the advantage of the client-server model, using a remote 
uh, as a remote as server that is always on, so the various users connect with that server. However, it is a remote server as any other one. If it goes down, user of the project can still quickly just update their list of remotes and work with other remotes. In this course, we will work with JIT, a specific version control system that has been started by Linux Torvalds to keep track of the Linux kernel development. We also work using the site github.com as remote. This has some advantage as it provides some web interface to the underlying GitHub JIT repository, so things are easy and nice. If for some reasons you don't like GitHub, you can work on uh, gitlab.com for example or other services, it would be exactly the same. If you are curious about the meaning of the name JIT, Go to the Wikipedia entry in English or consult the readme file in its own GitHub page. I love the last definition. The first thing is hence to sign up or sign in to the site github.com and create a new JIT repository. You can give it the name you want. I have chosen test JIT. Just attention not to use spaces and put attention that in JIT, as almost everywhere in what we use in this course, capital letters are not the same as lower letters. So if you use a capital letter in the JIT repository, stick with it for the rest of the work with it. In the web interface to create the repository, be sure to add at least a file so that you can retrieve the repository on your own PC clone in the JIT terminology, we will see this. You can simply choose to add a readme, uh, a license file and an appropriate JIT in your file. This JIT in your is a special file that tells JIT which kind of files to in your. For Julia, it will tell JIT to avoid check into the repositories all the temporary files linked to the pre-compilation. So, Let's have a try. This is the default home page in uh, GitHub after you log in. Let's click on new here. As repository name, we said we give test JIT. Here you can uh, write a brief description of the repository. and we check out all the options Julia uh, So we can initialize the repository. Okay, let's create it. Okay, now the repository has been created. For now, it exists only on GitHub, and uh, we can see that it has three uh, uh, files. Let's continue with other tools now, and uh, we will see how to import the repository locally and how to work with it. Keep these windows open, we'll go back, back to it later. Now it's the turn of installing the Julia executable. By itself, Julia is a command line tools, a terminal. We will then install an integrated development environment, but let's first install the base, the Julia interpreter uh, compiler. Let's hence go to julialang.org and download the installer for our operating system. In the browser, I open a new tab 
julialang.org download here I would choose the generic Linux uh, 64 uh, bit if you are uh, on Windows you will choose Windows uh, 64 bit in installer and run the installer during the installation be sure that you check the options add Julia to path In Windows, after the installation, you should have a program entry with Julia 1.6 or something like, like that. Click on it and you should be in a prompt similar to this one. Now just type uh, println hello world. To check that Julia is working. println stands for print on a new line and uh, put attention to use the double quota not the single one. Okay Julia is working let's move to the last step installing a development environment that uses the Julia terminal in the background. For Julia there are two mainstream options one using a development environment based on the Atom editor and the second option using a Visual Studio Code extension. It is my opinion that at the current time the first one is still better, it is more clean. However, the development of the underlying Atom editor has halted so the community is switching to the new Visual Studio Code based uh, development environment. We are hence going to use the second options di directly. Go to code.visualstudio.com and download and install uh, the Visual Studio Code program for your uh, operating system. This is an editor for many programming languages and it has also JIT integrated. Nice, isn't it? By the way, I did test these instructions on Windows for you, but I am primarily a Linux user. If you want to try directly installing everything on a Linux box, it is even easier. Please, please feel free to ask in the forum for instructions. The final step is to install within Visual Code the specific Julia extensions. So open Visual Studio Code that you just installed and uh, click on uh, this icon for extensions and uh, query for Julia. Pick up the Julia extension and click install. Put attention not to select the Julia Insider, the development version. Ok, now you should be ready. Click File, New File and uh, uh, select Julia as the language. At this point, as before in the text in Windows, type print ln hello world again and press alt plus enter at the same time at this point it will trigger a lot of things in the background this will happen only the first time. Uh, 
Okay. When it is ready, you will have the string hello world printed in the terminal by default on the bottom. We now type in the code windows two new lines. A equal to one and B equal to B, sorry, to A and two. We select them and with the cursor and we click again Alt plus Enter. You can see that what is executed is the wall block that has been highlighted with the cursor and that the result is reported both on this hover text and here in the terminal. Uh, I don't like this too much, I prefer to have the terminal clean so I go to the extension options, clicking on this gear and change the option Where is it? Julia execution result type and I change it to inline errors in the REPL. By the way, if you forgot to select add Julia to the path in the installation of Julia, you can specify the path of the Julia uh, program in the setting option, uh, where is it? Julia executable path. So either you let uh, Julia be on the path of your operating system uh, when you install Julia, or you have to specify manually the path of uh, Julia here in this uh, extension uh, setting. If you click on uh, the Julia logo, a column with Julia specific functionalities will appear. First, you have a workspace panel. where you can explore the type and the current values of all the variables in the program. Here we have A and here we have uh, our vector B. In this documentation panel, you can retrieve the, the documentation of the various functions, for example, print ln. Finally, the last widget is uh, where uh, the plots that we'll make will be displayed. We have completed the stack of tools we need to work on the topics of this course. We still need to install specific Julia libraries or packages in Julia terminology. We'll see this in a moment. If you had problems with the installer of the tools, ask in the forum for help. Another useful place to ask help is the official Julia Discourse Forum or uh, on, on discourse.julialang.org and Stack Overflow as well. I prefer the Discourse uh, uh, Forum. Finally, if you really can't install these tools on your own PC and you are an AgroParitech student, you can ask access to our own lab computational server on lefhippennancy.org. But consider that it may be slow if many people are connected at the same time and at the end of the course your space would be reset 
So it is really much better for you if you can install the tools we described in this slide on your own PC, the one that you will use for the rest of your studies and perhaps your work.